All right, so apparently today I forgot to hit the record button in the first 20 minutes or so um, in our class. So here, um, I'll put a recorded uh, video here um, to briefly go through uh, what uh, we talked about during the first 20 minutes um, of the class. The first one is, um, I kind of want to uh, give you guys a caveat on the textbook because the textbook is um, is designed for a graduate class. So it kind of assumes us that can tell like uh, a vector is a vector and the scalar is a scalar and the matrix is a matrix. However, for us amateurs who are first like uh, learning this type of optimization, it's kind of confusing. So let me just uh, uh, give you guys a quick heads up here. Um, in textbook, uh, the Roman letters are vectors. So for example, um, oh, what happens? Okay. For example, um, for example, we have X, we have P, and it doesn't have an error on top. Okay, so the textbook doesn't have an error on top of vectors. It, it's just uh, these plain letters. And uh, uh, if we have a Greek letter, for example, alpha, beta, gamma, um, it's normally standing for a scalar. And moreover, if we have a... Um, if, if we have a norm, it's just two norm. And all capital letters stand for matrices. So the inner product here, if you read the textbook, every single inner product is written in this way, okay? Actually, in our class, uh, we write down the inner product or say uh, the dot product. So let me add dot product uh, explicitly, which is, uh, this is, uh, uh, from I to one to N so that each component of P multiply with each component of I. And this is our um, inner product. So we normally write in this way. In textbook, if you read the textbook, the gradient descent is in this way. So the X is a vector, X is a vector, alpha is a scalar and X is a vector. But And also gradient of F is a, a, a vector. I think I have a typo right here. It should be alpha times gradient. So in our class, uh, we explicitly mark down every uh, single vector. So if, if a variable is a vector, we add an arrow on top to emphasize it. And then we, we try to solve, basically in, in today's class, uh, we'll try to solve how to choose uh, alpha, this question. So how do we choose alpha in the gradient descent? The first one is um, we have, before we choose alpha, we have to like uh, put a gauge there, what types of alpha we want. Like uh, uh, for example, first, First of all, we know like we want our algorithm to be convergent, um, but we don't want to waste computational resources. So we want to set a stopping criteria. This one is the ideal one. That is uh, the gradient is zero or say, uh, or just uh, this is a zero vector. This is the ideal one, but normally this is not achievable most of the time. And a practical one is uh, um, is we set a tolerance or threshold. Uh, however, in the class, um, so in the homework, actually, we'll see um, for the Rosenbrock function, this criterion is problematic because we have this sort of plateau um, that let me draw the ISO curve of uh, um, like uh, the Rosenbrock. We have some sort of a very steep landscape. So it's like uh, once 
and th these are the like level curves. Once the gradient descent goes to here on this plateau, uh, it kind of stops because uh, the gradient is very small, extremely small, and uh, our our like uh, local minimum is here, but. Uh, it's like once we get in this valley right here, the algorithm hardly moves. So we want to avoid that. And the better one is this one. Okay. This is a better stopping criteria. Like we compute the consecutive uh, difference of the function value, uh, but normalized by the function value itself. Uh, this is a difference. So when we're reaching, when we are reaching the local minimum, this is this should be smaller and smaller. So if, if we are converging. And now let's the next question is actually like how do we choose alpha? Um, the main thing we we saw on last Friday's uh, uh, coding lecture is uh, like we can't choose alpha too big. All right. But we can't like. Uh, but however, if we choose alpha too small, uh, the algorithm, like given a fixed number of iterations, the algorithm may not reach like design or designated like accuracy. For example, like ten to the neg negative eighth as our tolerance. So this is a balance. If we increase alpha, our algorithm will be more efficient. But we can increase alpha indefinitely because uh, alpha is. If alpha is bigger than a threshold, uh, the the algorithm will blow up and uh, everything just diverges. But uh, um, if we want to guarantee the convergence, we want to choose alpha small. But if we choose alpha too small, we so once we hit the plateau, we may not even move. Like maybe say after hundreds of thousands of iterations we may reach eventually the local minimum that it's quite um inefficient so um and then here comes a question uh, which is um the exact line search so basically what happens is we define a function so this is this is our next iteration if we if, if we look at it uh, if we look at the expression, this is uh, uh, this is next the next iterate, which means it it's like a in the next iteration where we are at the next iteration. And now what happens is we want to minimize the function value. Basically, so if we start here. Okay, and we follow the negative gradient direction. So we're on this line. We can stop here, we can stop here, we can stop here, we can stop here, we can stop here. And where should we stop? Is we find the, um, the arg minimum of this function. Arg minimum means we choose an alpha so that the function value is the smallest. Maybe it's here. Okay, it's the smallest. Um, so I think the other thing I talk about is uh, uh, the gradient is uh, orthogonal to uh, the uh, the tangent of the level curve. So here I uh, here I give uh, like a full proof here. So let me uh, just so let let me just do a lemma. So this says basically f smooth. We don't care about. Um, the non-smooth function much in our lecture, and uh, um, so gradient of f at a certain point. That that let's use x. Um, is orthogonal to the tangent line. Uh, at x for the uh, level uh, curve, or say level set or le level surface. Le let me use level surface, which is f of x equals a constant. 
Okay. So the proof, the proof is using parameterization. So uh, the proof is using parameterization. We could parameterize um, in. Uh, so let me draw a, a 2D picture. So uh, for example, um, what happens here is we can parameterize this surface. For example, this is F of uh, um, X equals C. And we can parameterize this surface as, uh, um, as some, using some parameterization. The parameterization we want to choose is a line. So we choose any lines. Suppose we choose any line, okay, lying on this level surface. Um, and we parameterize this line by basically by x equals x of t. It's like this line is a vector, okay? So for example, uh, this vector is x of t1, and this vector is x of t2. We basically, we basically, we parameterize this line by representing its position vector as a function of t. Okay, so right here. And moreover, at a certain point, at a certain point, the direction of the tangent, so the tangent, the tangent direction, or say tangent line, uh, the tangent direction, let me use direction, to this line, let's denote L, to this L, is we just take the derivative with respect to T, okay? So basically we wanna prove the gradient is orthogonal to this. By orthogonal, we mean the dot product is zero. And the proof is actually one line, is we simply, we consider uh, this one. The reason is because parameterization, so else parameterization. The reason we have this equation is because this L, so L uh, lying on this level surface. That, that's why we replace um, this x by a specific lines equation, uh, we'll get that. Then we just take the derivative with respect to t. So we take uh, d dt of this equation. The left side, the right side is zero, by the way. Oops. Sorry. Um. Okay, so I think I, uh, I kind of, okay, I, I think I uh, somehow messed up the cable. Um, so the right side is zero because it's a constant. The left side, we have to use a, a chain rule. So first we have gradient of F evaluated at this point, then dot product with the dx. Okay. And then what else? It's like, uh, because this one is a gradient at this point, right? So, uh, and this is uh, like the tangent direction of this line um, at this point, w which means, and we can choose, because we can choose any line. So uh, if we think about it, because of the choice. So now because of the choice, because L is arbitrary, because we can choose any line lying on this level surface. So this implies gradient of F is orthogonal to the tangent direction, or say the tangent line, the tangent of uh, the level uh, the level surface. So once we prove this, uh, we kind of use this uh, to illustrate um, using this picture, 
okay so we start from here and then we just go through this direction and uh we use an optimization problem to determine where we should stop so um but this is basically like the preparation and then we derive um right here the stupid status and i i think this uh, is already covered in the video so um uh, I would just uh, skip that. So uh, this is like an amendment to uh, the lecture video.